Hi, I'm Kelly Jensen. Uh, and this is the tale of two artistic cousins, each of whom made his own rather inappropriate mark on the world. Our story begins in France in the mid 1700s with two young boys in the Fragonard family. Jean Honoré Fragonard will grow up to be a master of the Rococo style of painting and his cousin Honoré Fragonard, just Honoré, yes, it's confusing, will create art the likes of which the world has never seen. Fragonard the painter made his living creating frivolous and somewhat naughty paintings for the French aristocracy, such as the seesaw, <clears throat> girl with a dog, and that old classic, many big pink women in one piece of gauze. What, what he's really known for is the happy accidents of the swing. This was commissioned by a courtier who requested a painting of himself looking up his mistress's dress while she was pushed on a swing by a bishop. Classy. Fragonard took the commission after it was turned down by a more serious artist, but even he toned down the requested bishop into a cuckolded husband. And clearly it's pretty racy for 1767. They're sneaking around behind the old man's back. She clearly knows what she's doing. He is obviously enjoying the view, and I'm guessing that shoe is not the only item of clothing she's missing. So was the painting a scandal at the time? Was there a great clutching of pearls? No, because nobody saw it. It was a private commission and it was never displayed outside some rich douchebag's house until after the French Revolution in 1789. Now, while the painter Fragonard was painting ye olde porn, that other Fragonard cousin was also hard at work perfecting his own artistic style. Honoré Fragonard was by this time the first professor of anatomy at a veterinary college just outside Paris, but he too had creative dreams, ambitions, a vision. And so he began his great work posing the corpses of the dead into dramatic tableaus. So it didn't start out super crazy. Flayed human specimens, or écorches, were not an uncommon teaching tool for anatomy students at the time. You, you get a corpse, you dissect it, you inject some wax into the veins, you add some shellac, and voila, you have a perfect anatomy model. And well, getting a little artsy with the pose wasn't uh, totally unheard of. The great anatomist Frederick Rush used to do this all the time. It's artistic, it's not messed up. Take this work of Fragonard's, for example, The Man with the Mandible. Now, apparently it's based on a Bible story about Samson wielding an ass's jawbone as a weapon. So if you're making dioramas out of dead people based on something the Bible tells you, that can't be crazy, right? And then there's this cheerful little piece, three fetuses dancing a jig. It's so festive, it's so jolly. It's definitely not grounds for anyone to be concerned about your mental health. And then there's this, popularly known as the Horseman of the Apocalypse. It's definitely art and in no way just batshit to mount a flayed person on a flayed horse and then finish off the tableau with the flayed corpses of human fetuses riding sheep and horse fetuses. It's definitely art, super, totally, very sane. And according to the museum that houses Fragonard's work, he did not get fired from his professorship for being a madman. There were personality differences. Possibly the personality differences consisted of the fact that Fragonard made some 700 écorchés during his lifetime, only 21 of which still survive. After being fired from his job, Fragonard went freelance and sold his flayed corpse dioramas to the same sort of stinking rich aristocrats that were buying up his cousin's paintings. But the same fate befell both of the Fragonard cousins. The French Revolution killed off all of their patrons. With no aristocrats to buy saucy paintings or dramatic dead folks to enliven their homes, their income dried up. So both of them served on the National Jury of Arts in 1794, which really makes you wonder who else was on the panel. But the, eventually the anatomist had to fall back on a teaching gig and the painter left Paris and retired in obscurity. But of course their work lives on. A portrait by the painter Fragonard recently sold for 17 million pounds and the anatomist's work is displayed at the very college that fired him alongside the veterinary oddities that he collected. So the Musée Fragonard is therefore the only museum I know in which the 10-legged sheep is not the weirdest thing in the collection. So let's raise a glass to trusting your artistic vision and to following your highly specific and not really socially acceptable bliss. Cheers. <laughs>